one. So the question is, are giant ore deposits rogue waves or dragon kings? There are many examples in nature, finance and elsewhere where events occur that are outside the range of expectation. One of these are rogue waves, giant waves at sea, where the amplitude of the wave is more than twice the upper third of the background. That's the way they're defined. On the other hand, we have things called dragon kings that Sorne has talked about. And you can see that they're not part of a power law distribution and Sorne has given various models for how they occur and differ from normal old power law events. So the question is, are giant ore bodies the equivalent of rogue waves or dragon kings? And if so, does that tell us something about why they are so big? So here's an, a distribution of gold endowment in the Yilgarn in Western Australia. And you can see that the golden mile, which is way off scale here, is 11 standard deviations away from the mean. So that's way outside the expectations of what we expect. And so by definition, they're in the realm of dragon kings and rogue waves. There are two current ways of thinking about mineral endowment. One is to propose that endowment follows a log normal distribution as shown in the orange figure. And the other is to propose a power law distribution, which is sometimes expressed as a zip distribution. Uh, there's a little attempt to rationalize the difference between these two types of distributions in the literature, or even to show that the proposed distributions are best fit or even true. So again, to emphasize dragon kings are not parts of power law distributions. So it seems that giant ore deposits belong to statistical distributions that are different to power laws, or for that matter, log normal distributions, which have thin fat tails. The basic principle involved is that the growth law for a quantity X, that might be gold or muscovite or something, is an expression of the cumulative probability distribution for X. So linear growth, if it exists, would result in a normal distribution. You can see the normal distribution plotted as both, both the probability distribution and the cumulative distribution on the right. An exponential growth would result in a log normal distribution. On the other hand, sigmoidal growth laws of various forms result in what are called extreme value stable distributions. And there are just three of these, the Weibull, the Gumbel, and the Freshe. And you'll note that the Gumbel has a very, very thin tail on the right. The Weibull has a slightly thicker tail and the Freshe can have very thick tails. So what are the growth laws associated with mineralizing systems? So here's a sketch modified from Tom Blenkinsop. Uh, and the point about uh, all bodies is that they involve three stages, nucleation, growth, which is controlled by the supply of heat or mass, and final extinction, when either the supply runs out or the temperature drops too low for reactions to proceed. So this nucleation growth extinction sequence leads to some form of sigmoidal growth curve. And you can see three here in blue, green and red. The blue one shows slow nucleation, variable growth and early death. The red ones show rapid nucleation, early rapid growth and long growth before death. Lavender has shown that for open systems, the decrease in entropy associated with structure or pattern formation leads directly to Weibull or Freshe distributions. And it's also been shown that these various growth curves lead to Weibull, Gumbel and Freshe distributions. So there's both a thermodynamic reason and a st statistical reason as to why these curves should occur. So, here, the dragon kings live in this 
long-tailed fresh air distribution in red. Systems that nucleate slowly, grow fast and die rapidly are likely to follow a Weibull distribution. These are low endowment systems. Systems that have an inflection point exactly at one on E are probably rare, but correspond to Gumbel distributions. And systems that nucleate rapidly and have early growth rates, but long lifetimes are likely to follow fresh air distributions and correspond to high endowment systems. So what do we see in real systems? Well, here's a plots from Abitibi and you can see the Abitibi distribution at the regional scale follows very, very nicely a fresh air distribution, both in the cumulative distribution on the left and the probability plot on the right. The Turkey data from Yogurt again follows a Weibull distribution. The Blenkinsop distribution from Zimbabwe follows a fresh air distribution. Chile copper from, this is a data from Singer, follows very, very nicely a fresh air distribution, except right at the end, which is maybe nitpicking, but I think important, where you can see that the last four, the biggest four, uh, are slightly divergent from the fresh air distribution. And this is to be expected. There's a, a theorem well established since 1930 that there's a hierarchy of these stable distributions such that a power law evolves into a Weibull, which involves into a Gumbel as the size of the distribution increases and a gamma involves to a fresh A, which also evolves essentially to a Gumbel. And you can see that the five top chili distributions, El Teniente, Chucky, Los Bronchos, Escondida and Los Palombreras follow very, very nice Gumbel distribution. This also is true at the scale of, of drill core. So here's a drill core 500 meters long from Sunrise Dam in the Yulgan, and it shows a plot of infrared wavelength. Uh, in other words, it's, it's picking out the distinction between aluminium poor and silicon rich fengites and aluminium rich and silicon poor muscovites. You see again, this follows a very nice fresh air distribution. So even an alteration assemblage gives a fresh air distribution. Um, and this is true for many, many other alteration assemblages as well. So in conclusion, we expect the cumulative probability distributions from mineral abundance and endowment to be some form of sigmoidal distribution. This means that we end up with a stable extreme distribution. Fresh air distributions are for dragon kings and wibbles are for low endowment systems. This is true at all scales from regional to hand specimen. Variations in the growth law at all scales are reflected in variations in the cumulative probability distribution at the various scales. Extreme fresh air in drill core indicates large endowment. Thank you.